Where will you be when it hits the fan? More importantly, what kind of tools are you going to have to help you get home safely to your family? Today, I want to talk about one of the most important topics in the preparedness community, and that is the get home bag. I'm going to show you the pack that I chose for my personal get home bag and the things inside. Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about the Maxpedition Pygmy Falcon 2. Now this is the bag that I chose for my personal get home bag. I'm going to show you why. Maxpedition products are extremely customizable. Now when you build a get home bag or a bug out bag or a scavenger bag, whatever, a lot of times you're limited to the pack itself and the design that the way it came. So with Maxpedition products, you've got all this molly webbing, you've got the compartmentalization, uh, the things that they're really good at. Also, you've got a really rugged and virtually waterproof bag. That's why I chose this one here. And uh, we're gonna dive into it and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So you can see that I've got some things strapped to the outside of this bag. Now, it's not necessarily a gray man style bag. Uh, it kind of alludes to the fact that you might know a thing or two or you might have a thing or two of value that someone else might want to take from you. So you have to be careful with that. Out here where I live, I'm not necessarily worried about that. Uh, we've got a lot of outdoorsy type people, you know, around here. And uh, you see a lot of these packs here and there, people walking around with them. So that's not really a concern of mine. Now, if I were going to a library in New York City or something like that, then, you know, yeah, I'd, if you're walking past the White House carrying this thing, you're probably going to get questioned. So, one thing that I do like the most about Maxpedition products is their, the compartments that they have. Um, you can do a lot with them. It's not like you have an old school backpack you would take to high school and you just throw all your crap in there and it's jumbled around. You want to know where your stuff is. Uh, you want to be able to get to it in the dark. Um, you know, you may have some kind of reason for doing that. Uh, you want to have a good idea of where your things are inside of it. Now I've got a ton of stuff in here and like I said before I'm going to take some things out of it today that I really don't feel like is necessary but I just want to show you that there are a few options that you might like and might want to put in your bag. So let's get started with this. Um, on the outside here I've got some things that I like to get quick access to. Now number one is my trauma kit. So I can open this up. I've got some clot, blood clot stopping stuff, whatever you call it. Uh, I've got some skin glue. I've got Neosporin. And this is basically my trauma kit. Uh, I've got a few band-aids in here, like some boo-boo stuff. But uh, I've got my tourniquet in here. Let me get that out. And I like the rat tourniquet. Uh, I just like the way they work and they pack down really small. A lot of guys like the cat tourniquets, that's fine. I've never messed with one. I just, I like this one. So, uh, I've got some gauze and some medical tape in here and some uh, antiseptic hand wipes or swabs or whatever you want to call it. Uh, like I said, I got a few band aids. I'm not going to pull all that stuff out. Now, this particular pouch does have a divider in it. I guess it kind of works for what I've got it set up for, but um, it's. It could be in the way for some people. It depends uh, on what you want to do with that. But now this is strapped onto the side of this molly webbing with, I believe these are the three inch tack ties. It might be the five, I can't remember. Um, but they hold pretty well if you get them cinched in there right. So now the one thing that you want to look out for when you are strapping things to the outside of these packs is I've got these it's basically a water bottle holder, but it cinches down and you can put other things in it like I've done with this one. Uh, you want to be able to clear whatever you got up top to get access to what's in here. So, you know, it, you just got to be careful on how you do it. And I go through this thing all the time and rearrange it. And it's, it's fun for me. It's a hobby. So whatever. But in here, I've got one of the most important things, I think, is a water filter. Now, I've been on quite a few backpacking trips and I would always boil my water, you know, but this, we're not talking about using this pack for a leisurely camping trip or whatever. If you're in a situation and you really need to get home, uh, for example, I'm working up in the mountains right now a good bit and it is a, about a two hour drive, give or take, back to my house. 
I pulled that up on Google Maps and it said it's about a 27 hour walking distance. Now that's non-stop, that's not taking breaks, that's not eating, that's not sleeping, nothing. That's walking 27 hours. Nobody's gonna do that. So you need to have a few things. I don't wanna stop and boil water. I have the ability to do that with this pack, but I don't want to do that. So what I've got is a Sawyer Mini rolled up in a bandana. Now what I'm gonna do is get a smaller Maxpedition pouch that I can slide in there and have quick access to that and all this stuff will be a little bit better organized. But for right now, this is fine. Um, the Sawyer Mini comes with a filter, a straw, a back flush and plunger for cleaning the filter out. And this 16 ounce uh, water bladder that you can fill up in a creek um, and you wanna use, you know, clean running water if you can. Um, and if you want to, I can take this bandana, take this cap off, put the bandana on it submerge it and let it fill that way and keep a good bit more of that debris out. Um, but the filter is going to take care of most of that too. Um, you don't want a whole lot of large debris coming in this thing. So, but anyway, it packs up small. Um, there is a slightly larger option called the squeeze and it comes with two of these bags and they are two 32 ounce bags. Now your Nalgene bottle is a 32 ounce bottle and I'll get to why I use this plastic one later. Um, so yeah, it'd be nice to have, if you had two of these and you wanted to fill them up really quick, I can just do this with this one twice. I'll fill it up twice, squeeze it in there twice, and you know, that'll be that. So anyway, so I keep this rolled up in this bandana for now until I get a pouch. Um, I actually just got this the other day, it came in the mail, so. But that, I have quick access to this. Uh, it's in a little cinch cord uh, water bottle pocket on the side here, so it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, and the one one of the things that I wish this bag had differently was I wish that this were the solid thousand denier nylon uh, like the rest of the bag. They're not, and they work, and they're tough. Um, I had another one of these bags that I carried for years. I used to use it on a motorcycle because it's a smaller pack. It rides high on the shoulders. I'll show you later. You have good access to a firearm with it. Nothing's in the way. Um, and that was really the only thing I could think of as far as a complaint uh, with this is this mesh because if you get it caught on a you know a good patch of briars or something but I'm pretty sure I've done that before and I have never had an issue now the bottom of it does have the nylon in it it's just the uh, the top three quarters of it does not so uh, Nalgene water bottle 32 ounce um, if you're rationing your water and you're not guzzling it down now I know that's hard to do when it's hot but uh, right now when it's colder um, you can you can make this go a long way and like I said if you don't have to get your cook set out and boil water and use fuel or build a fire or anything like that anything that can keep you from uh, you know having a fire that somebody could smell I mean you want to move you don't want to hang out in camp like I said um, so these are good they're lightweight and if they're empty if you had one in here empty uh, I keep a water jug with me at work um, so I'm not going to use this, but I will keep it with me so I could fill it up and I could go. Um, so that reduces my pack weight for when I'm getting in and out of vehicles, if I'm not really utilizing this for its intended purpose, which is an SHTF situation, natural disaster, whatever. Uh, the truck stops working, we're in the mountains and we can't flag anybody down, whatever, you know. So now Gene Bottle, saw your Mini, I think it's a good way to go. Now. And also, one thing, Maxpedition packs, a lot of them don't have external water bottle holders on them. I like this one, and I can actually reach behind me and get it out, and most of the time put it back in without having to take the pack off. I really like that. I don't want to have to take the pack off, you know, take a knee, unzip everything, get it out. That's why I like this pack. Uh, it's They don't have very many that have this. So Now, you have a tension bungee here on the bottom and uh, I've got my military style rain poncho in here and this is big enough uh, that I can put this on over the pack and me and everything else and it's gonna cover everything you know all the way down to past my knees uh, I'm 6'1 so that's you know if you're shorter I don't I mean I don't know how short you'd have to be for it to drag the ground but I think you can actually fold it up and 
hit some of the snaps on it and keep it off the ground. Uh, this is made out of a ripstop material and this is a USGI Industries rain poncho. Uh, it's got this digital camo bag, but the poncho itself, I went with the Marpat. Um, you've got different, uh, you got like multicam and woodland and whatever. I went with the Marpat because I thought it, the pattern kind of broke up a little bit better uh, for where the, the state that I live in, which is North Carolina, um, year round. So right now it's, you know, middle of December, everything's dead. Uh, but when everything's, you know, springtime, summertime, it'll help keep you hidden. Uh, you can turn this thing into a shelter. You're going to need some tent stakes or you're going to have to make some. I, carry, I keep some in here with me because I don't want to have to sit there and make more than I have to. I'm not trying to bushcraft my way back home. I respect a man's need to bushcraft, but if I'm trying to get home and I'm worried about whether or not I'm gonna make it or worried about my family or something, I just wanna go. I, I wanna have, that's why I have the water filter. That's why I have this. Um, pretty lightweight. I don't know how much this weighs. I'm not a gram counter. You know, I'm not uh, your typical backpacking dude that gets out there and don't even build a fire, just use your jet bowls and stuff like that. I don't, I don't adhere to that kind of thing. Uh, I'm more of an outdoorsman. If I'm having fun in the woods or hiking, I want to spend some time out there. I don't want to hurry up and see how many miles I can cover. Now, with this, I do. I want to get going as fast as I can. And I may not need to use this as a shelter, um, but it's a good option. You can pull a ridgeline cord with some 550 paracord. You can make some stakes or carry some with you. I recommend just carrying a few with you. They're lightweight. Uh, you just beat them in the ground with something. And you know, you've got a pretty decent little shelter if it's pouring down rain uh, or if you're cold, you know, you could do a, a plow point or a lean to or even an A-frame really um, and put a fire near you and some of that heat will get in there. Uh, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but you can do it. And that's why we have these tools here. So. I keep it strapped on the outside because if it starts raining on me and I'm walking, uh, I can just reach out there and grab it, throw it over me and keep all of my stuff dry. So the other thing I have on the outside of the pack here is my Leatherman Wave. Um, and this is, goes along with the Molly webbing, uh, the way that it's, it's got a snap on it and it, you just weave it through the Molly webbing and it, it doesn't move. It's one of the best pouches that I have. Uh, a buddy of mine gave that to me and I love it. If I get a new pack, I put this on it immediately. Leatherman Wave it has blades that you can access one-handed. You may be injured. You may have gloves on. It's cold. You don't want to take your gloves off. That kind of thing. Um, it's got the serrated one, so if you need to cut some cordage or whatever, uh, it's about the only thing I use a serrated blade for. Um, it's also got a file for wood or metal, and it's got a saw, and I have used this thing for so many different things. Uh, it works great. It cuts through green stuff, dry stuff, whatever. Um, it's a really good saw. It's a decent size. So, And then, you know, there's the pliers and the screwdrivers and all that stuff on the inside. But mainly, I like this one. You can put a pocket clip on it. You got to order it separate. Um, and I put a little piece of paracord on there. I can just yank it out of my pocket. Um, but these outside blades are locking. Um, so you got to push that down there. But so you know, it's not going to close on you. Um, I really, really like this multi tool. Um, I did a review on it years and years ago on trailspace.com uh, when I first started getting into the camping and backpacking kind of thing. And it was number one for a while. I think, I think I'm still number 12, and that's been 14 years ago or something like that. So, anyway, haven't been on there in a long time. Uh, but uh, anyway, Leatherman Wave really, really like this. It's hands down my favorite multi-tool that there is. Uh, now the new ones, they have this removable blade for the wire cutter. I do not like that. I suggest if you find one, find the solid one. And I have cut through braided steel cable, smaller, obviously. I shouldn't have done it, but I did. And this thing still cuts wire and whatever else I need to do. So very important tool. One of my most versatile tools that I have. Uh, I'd never leave the house without it unless I'm just going to the store or something and heck even then I might have it on me so that's my tool now I've got a radio and I suggest that everybody has to have some kind 
of alternate communication device with you if you are traveling you know more than an hour away from your house um, now I did get a ham radio license uh, a little over a year ago it's just a technician license I didn't do it as a hobby I've been on the repeaters and talked to some guys just to see what kind of capability this particular radio has uh, I don't get on there and hang out most of the time they're just goofing off and talking about what they had for dinner once in a while you get guys on there talking about gear and things like that um, but you can program repeaters into these things and you can actually get messages out and do sort of like a message chain um, I'm not super nerdy in this kind of subject I do enjoy programming this thing and learning how to use it uh, one of the main things I got it for is uh, simplex contact now what that is it's not the use of a computer that's you getting on a frequency and calling out and trying to get a hold of anybody that's around this little radio it was about 80 bucks when I purchased it this is the Yesu FT4X it's the smallest one that they make it's one of the smaller ones that you will find and I think in comparison to the 30 or 40 dollar Bayo fangs that everybody's getting because they're cheap and you can just buy them in numbers um, I mean they're all Chinese I believe this one may be Japanese I'm not sure but uh, this little radio is phenomenal I did upgrade the antenna uh, for about 25 bucks you get a really phenomenal upgrade um, I was receiving people from further away immediately um, I come out here not far from where I'm sitting right now and one of the repeaters that I can pick up the best on is actually about 19 miles away now my brother is about I don't say five six miles away from here his house and he could pick me up on this uh, he doesn't have a license I bought him one of these for Christmas one year he could listen uh, but it's really illegal unless there's an actual emergency for him to get on but he did say that he could hear me so we've got a lot of uh, hilly terrain out here and large trees um, I went out on the deck which we're up on a hill over a pasture and he was able to receive me from there so the uh, Yesu FT4RX I highly recommend it the battery life on this thing is crazy it's uh, I haven't turned this radio on in probably about three to four months because like I said I'm not a hobbyist when it comes to this but I've still got a completely full charge and apparently I left it on scan because it's scanning now but uh, I also have the uh, bigger brother to this uh, came out before this one the uh, FT65 I thought that since it was bigger it would be easier to manipulate one-handed it's actually not and the screen doesn't look quite as good but they're both really good radios this one is rated at a 14 hour battery life uh, the FT65 I believe is a 12 either way I haven't had an issue out of either one of them um, but I would go with this one over anything else for for what I do uh, like I said I, I'd like to have an HF set up uh, I don't but anyway Yesu make really good high quality products this antenna is a it's a diamond antenna um, so you can go on uh, DX engineering is where I ordered my stuff from um, good customer service you can call them and talk to them they'll help you out um, one thing about this radio that really really bugs me is it doesn't have a way to charge it through USB or through like a cigarette lighter in my truck or something like that it's just a old-school pedestal walkie-talkie style uh, charging system so I think that you could probably get a couple adapters and rig something up uh, you have to be careful about how you do that you don't want to surge the battery um, you know so you'd have to have some type of inverter or something like that on there um, let me get this B out of here but anyway highly recommend this radio uh, it the output it's a uh, it's a 5 watt output um, and like I said you can a lot of times pick up people that they wouldn't be able to pick you up because you don't have enough power going out but you can listen and that is the main thing uh, you can pick up the uh, NOAA stations on here and listen to any kind of emergencies weather emergencies or what have you um, if there was a an attack on American soil it would probably be aired across one of these so you'd at least know what's going on even if you, your cell phone's not working and you can't get you know a hold of anybody else so highly recommend this uh, I would put more faith in this than I would a cell phone at this point um, you never know what's gonna happen we've got some solar flares coming you know um, and also an election so take that how you want moving on so 
One thing that I thought was going to really annoy me about this pack was this Y strap on top. It's sort of a compression strap. It keeps your other pockets from sagging out if you've got this thing really, you know, packed down. But uh, I found that there is one incredible use for it, and that is you got your rain poncho on, you're walking around in the rain. Okay, it stops raining. You don't want to wear it anymore. So just drape it across your pack and clip that on there and just let it dry while you walk. And when it's dry, pack it up. I've used that numerous times in the mountains uh, when it's snowing and things like that. And I just, I can hang my pack by this little handle here and just let all that drape down the side and drip dry or whatever. So you can take this off if you don't like it. I recommend you leave it on. Um, it's just, it's come in way more handy than I thought it would. Uh, it used to annoy me, but then I started using it and now it's one of my favorite features. Another one of my favorite features on this pack, and I think most Maxpedition products have this, is this handy, really sturdy grab handle. Uh, most of the time, if I grab this thing and I'm leaving the house, throwing it in the truck, I grab it by this. I put a carabiner on here in the work van, I clip it to the cage between the seats and it hangs there. These things are tough. You're not going to have to worry about the stitchings coming loose on it. I mean, maybe 30 years from now, maybe, you know. Now, on to the next pocket. The uh, This is what I call the quick access pocket. Um, now, you do have to undo this to access it. This right here, and this is where things change in your pack. If a situation happens, and you have to reach in this pocket, for me anyway, and what I've got in it. Things are coming out of this and going on to my person. And then I've got a free pocket here to put things in, change things around. So I keep my Glock 48 with a concealed carry holster in there, as well as two magazines. And these are the Shield Arms magazines. Uh, so I'm able to get 15 rounds in this instead of the standard 10. You do have to change out the mag release or it'll chew up the magazines. Um, or actually the magazines will chew up the uh, release because it's plastic. So you gotta put a steel one in. Uh, this comes as a kit, you get three of these and the uh, release for I think about 40 or 140 bucks. Um, it's worth it to me because then you get basically a smaller width in a Glock 19. So uh, that's my firearm of choice for carrying around concealed. Now on that topic, I am all for somebody wanting to carry, you know, open carry. Most of the time I do not because I feel like if people see it, they got to, they're thinking about it. Um, whether they are for it or against it or whether they want to try and take it from you or whatever. If you don't know it's there, you're not worried about it. So I, I, I just, I don't like people to know everything that I'm doing. Um, you know, it doesn't bother me if somebody's open carrying, get more power to them. And I actually, I like seeing that because I feel like there's more people like me out there. I like my things concealed. Um, that's just, that's one less thing that anybody's gonna notice about you. And you don't really wanna be noticed, especially in an SHTF situation. You don't want people to think you know anything, you have any kind of training, or you have anything of value. You just want to be left alone, so, and go on your way. So now that this pocket's empty, uh, on my way home, I could stop at a gas station if it were open. Uh, I could purchase a few things, you know, food items, stick them in here or whatever. Or I could take something from the inside that I wish I had room for on the outside and put it closer to the outside with this pocket. So, now on to the next pocket is, this is your admin pouch. Now, you know, I keep, I've got a case in here for my sunglasses. Real quick on these Costa sunglasses, um, you know, I, I'm not a fanboy or nothing like that, but I will say these things were really expensive. They were like 280 bucks. It's the only pair of sunglasses that I've ever been able to wear long term without getting a headache. Um, these are glass, uh, they're scratch and shatter resistant. Uh, at one point, the little rubber things came off. Um, so I filed a claim, sent them some photos and sent them these. They, uh, air mailed next day air mailed me a brand new pair so I basically got almost 600 bucks worth of sunglasses for the 280 that I paid and it's lifetime warranty so I'm sure 
maybe in five years or so I might have to do that again um, so anyway you want to be able to protect your eyes uh, especially if you're outside in the elements a lot uh, your eyes are one of the most important things you have if not the most important thing so protect your eyes now also in this pouch you can see where your pins and things goes uh, I've got a pin I write in the rain pin I've got a sharpie in case I need to write anything down um, I actually have you need to carry a fixed blade knife on you uh, this is in addition to what you have in your pockets already so you know obviously everybody carries a pocket knife or should uh, this is a Glock field knife these things are not expensive I think maybe right now they might be 40 bucks uh, I think I gave a buddy of mine 20 bucks for these for this one you can strap this to the outside of the pack uh, this is all hard polymer um, it's got a loop down here you can tie this part to your thigh if you want to you push this part with your thumb and it comes out and you got a pretty good sized knife here I mean if you were gonna be in a knife fight this would be the one you want um, it's not perfect for everything else it's not my favorite knife it's not my going camping bushcrafty kind of knife um, this is a really good it's basically a crowbar with a sharpened edge on it uh, right here uh, you can, this can be utilized for a bottle opener um, the handle it is not full tang and I really like for my knives to be full tang this one is not but it I think the tang comes to about right here and you've got this hollow space in here you can take this butt cap off and there's some holes I don't know if you can see it right here it goes straight through you can sharpen a stick put it through the handle of this knife drive a finish nail through it bend it over and you've got a spear so these these trench knives are really really good and I also saw a video where a guy stabbed this into a log and then hammered it down and shot the handle 100 times with a 22 and it didn't break I mean it had some damage but it didn't break you could still use it so I like to keep my nice knives at home because if I'm trying to get home and I end up losing this pack for whatever reason all of my my good knives are home and this is a good knife it's just not my nice knives so I did not lose one of those I lost this 30 40 dollar knife so um, and it is made out of I believe 1095 carbon steel so you need to keep it old um, so if you kill a squirrel and eat it take some of the fat rub it on the blade good to go and I used to keep that strapped on the side of the pack here and run the knife down in the water bottle holder on the other side but I've reconfigured my pack recently so for right now it's in here now I've got you know this is my admin pack so I keep my charging cable for my phone um, in a wall charger and I've got this pouch that actually came with this battery storage this is a Maxpedition product as well this came inside of this I didn't really see a reason why I should keep this in here uh, it's not like I'm gonna put it on the outside it's just batteries um, I don't want them baking in the Sun I want them shaded in the pack so what I did put in here was I've got a compass map reading compass in here this is a Sunto MC2 this compass I saw this was recommended by Dave Canterbury for somebody that wants to take one of his classes I believe this is supposed to be good um, or very accurate in the Western Hemisphere if not you know North and South America whatever they've got another one that's supposed to be good for all over the world I don't really see myself leaving the country anytime soon unless I'm taken out of the country at that point I'm not gonna have this so uh, this pouch is made out of the same thousand denier virtually waterproof nylon is this you could put it on the outside if you want a quick access whatever in there it's velcro it's got the molly webbing on it um, but I felt like it would protect my compass better than just throwing it in the pack so now onto this battery storage uh, there's two ends to this thing one side I've got my CR 123s for my main flashlight here my 1L um, it holds four of those and I've also got a headlamp in here so the other side I'm able to put how many is in here six triple uh, A's which we found out in my last fanny pack video or not my, my flashlight video that you can actually use a triple A in this 1L flashlight uh, and it'll work too just don't have as much power so that's cool too but I can refuel my headlamp twice with this so and about the headlamp 
I've got, you got to have a headlamp. I mean, you just have to. Um, I'm probably going to use this nine times out of ten more than I would a standard flashlight. It doesn't have all the power. You don't need all that power on a headlamp. Uh, you just need to be able to see what's in front of you um, if you're working on something. Uh, this is a $30 black diamond. I have put this thing through the ringer. I've had it for probably seven, eight years. I don't know. Um, I've had it out in the rain. I mean bad rain, uh, snow, everything. These are starting to loosen up a little bit, but you know, the elastic in it's kind of given. Um, for 30 bucks, you can't beat it. You can tighten it here. You put it on your head and just pull it and it's good to go. This takes three AAAs. Um, and also it has a red light on it. And you can adjust how bright uh, the your regular light is too. If you just want to dim it down really low, you don't want to be seen, uh, or just need don't need a whole lot of light. Um, it covers a uh, 30 or 40 foot, you know, area that you're looking at. So you, it's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna get a better one, I think. Uh, probably a stream light. Gonna look at that. Or I got my wife a Petzl, which actually has the blue light for blood tracking if you shoot a deer. Or something and it starts to get dark it's a little bit easier to track it down with the blue light um, but anyway uh, you can get these at Academy I think they're like 30 bucks they've got different ones this is the I want to say 300 lumen something like that um, not super bright not super condensed candela or whatever if you want to get nerdy on it um, this has served me very well it's lightweight the one issue I have with this is it's got a soft button on it so you don't know how many times I've seen a light shining in my pack or I've you know seen that it's on or I open it up and the batteries are dead because who knows how long it's been on that's kind of annoying to me I don't really want to get another extra case or carry item for this specifically I just want to get one with a stiffer button on it so that's something to consider um, you know and that's why you carry extra batteries now on that point I do want to mention you're gonna see a lot of guys on YouTube that tell you set this pack up, put it in your vehicle, put it in your house, wherever you're gonna keep it, and don't touch nothing in it. I don't adhere to that uh, mentality when it comes to this, simply because if you don't look at this pack often as sort of like your extended EDC uh, gear, you're not gonna know what's in it and you're not gonna know where the stuff is. You need to know your pack. Um, if I didn't use this headlamp out of this pack, I wouldn't know that's dead and if I didn't have spare batteries what would I do you know I'd have to hold this one in my mouth or clip it to my hat and you know, that's not ideal so uh, I use my pack I use the stuff in it I replace it as needed it's just like your pantry or just like they do in the grocery store first in first out um, you just you keep up with your stuff so and on the outside here the little velcro patch I've got the Streamlight 1L one double A and also one triple A apparently. So uh, I love this flashlight. I've got three options to fuel this thing. So if y you can find something to power this light, uh, it's not rechargeable. I don't care. So moving on in here, I've got, I live in North Carolina. So I've got a map of the Eastern United States here folded up. Um, this one is by Rand McNally, uh, made in the USA, and this is a pretty good map. Um, now with your maps, you need to update them every couple of years because if you're trying to get home and you're coming through some mountains and uh, a lot of times they add roads that aren't on the older maps. Now, you know, a few roads here or there, not that big of a deal, but if you come across a neighborhood and you get spun around in a big neighborhood, you're gonna lose time. You don't wanna lose time you know, especially if it's getting dark or if you're getting hungry or if your family don't know where you're at. Keep up with your maps. Uh, get a good one. This one's not waterproof, but I'm not worried about it inside here unless I just drop this whole thing in a creek or something. So I don't tend to do that. Now, I just want to show you this admin pack. It's got this bottom large pocket. You could actually put your firearm down in here. Uh, Full-size firearm. I've done it. Uh, Full-size 45s magazines whatever this uh 11 12 inch knife fits down in here so i've got a right in the rain pad you go with the pan and everything you can actually put this in this pocket here if you wanted to i think yeah 
I don't. I keep it back here. I use this for other things. Now I've got something. This is one of the items that I'm going to pull out of my pack. So this came with a Samsung cell phone that I bought years ago. This is a Mophie battery bank, and it's got this little light on the side. You click this, and it shows you how much charge is on it. I've got three out of four dots on there. Uh, I think you can charge a laptop with this thing one time. Uh, you can charge a cell phone three or four times with it. It's pretty good. Um, I put this in my bag about a year ago. I think I've used it once. Now, the one thing about that, and the only thing I'm going to have to charge is my cell phone. I wish I could charge my radio with it, but I can't. So that's one reason why I'm pulling it out. Your cell phone is your main line of communication right now. If I have to use this bag for its intended purpose, I don't know if my cell phone's gonna work. And so that's something to consider. So I've got this thing to carry around with the addition of other things I've got in here that I just found that I don't really need. Um, I learned a long time ago, backpacking, you find out really quickly what you do and do not need. And you can be really uncomfortable. And if you're walking 17 miles through the mountains, it's, you know, you're gonna pay for it. And I just don't recommend carrying too much stuff. I am a gearhead. Uh, I, my stuff tends to be kind of tool heavy. And I just don't really wanna carry more than I need to. This pack weighs at least five pounds more than I want it to for me to be as agile as I feel like I can be. Um, so, you know, really pay attention to what you got in here. This is, it's going to come out because if, if something happens, I'm not going to be using my phone like crazy. I might make a few calls, but it's mostly going to be text messages, um, saying, look, uh, I'm on the way, you know, I'll contact you later or something like that. So anyway, uh, it's not really, my phone stays charged. I don't use it a ton. I'm just not that worried about it so I don't like to rely too much on technology so like I said I got my radio it'll probably outlast my phone if you get on there uh, what's the old adage there uh, uh, what is it three every three hours for three minutes on channel three the rule of threes or whatever that's how you preserve your battery life so and that's all I've got in there. There is this little keeper here if you want to attach your keys in there and drop it down in this pocket and it won't be floating around. Uh, now, on the main compartment. Now this pack is a clamshell style pack. It does completely open like this. So you can see how I've got my things organized in here. Some of this stuff's kind of thrown on top, but when the pack is in an upright position, this stuff is basically stacked, so it doesn't really move around all that much. This pack is an 18 liter pack. It doesn't have a ton of room, but you can get a pretty good amount of stuff in here. It's gonna give you an edge, and that is the main thing. So now with my tactical fanny pack review, I couldn't get nowhere near this stuff in that thing, um, but I don't need as much. Now with colder weather, you could probably throw a fleece in here or whatever. I mean, you can pack this thing out more than what I've got it, but I don't want it sticking too far out and get caught on things uh, or just throwing me off balance um, or anything like that. So I'm pretty good about uh, dressing for the weather. And a lot of times if I think it's going to be cold, it ends up warming up and I end up stripping layers down. So I would rather leave something behind than have to carry it around with me uh, just because I, I like to be able to move. So. But what I do have in here is, you know, everybody's got a shemog. Uh, in that, I've got uh, an extra pair of underwear and an extra pair of socks. People uh, are real big on wool socks and merino wool and all that. Um, that makes my feet sweat. It makes me uncomfortable. I like a like a medium thickness. Uh, these are gold toes. These are really excellent socks. It's the last pair I have, and I saved them for this pack. You know, if you got wet feet or whatever. You dry your feet off by the fire, you throw these on, you're, you're gonna feel pretty good. It's gonna be a morale booster. So, uh, I roll this, I keep this rolled up in the bottom because it, it doesn't matter if it gets crushed, it's out of the way. And honestly, I, I'm not gonna have to get to my socks in a hurry, I wouldn't think. Um, or the Shemag, this is something I can stop, 
I can take my time. This whole pocket here is something I can pretty much stop and take my time and get out if I need to. So that's why I've got so much stuff on the outside and the front pockets. Now, well, the way I've got things stacked in here, uh, I always keep this pouch on the bottom. Now, this is the max position. I think it's called the fatty. Uh, some people like to use these as their med kit. It's got the Velcro patch on there. You can put your little red uh, patch with the white cross on there if you want to. Um, I like to keep my stuff on the outside. And I don't do that because, like I said, I'm trying to draw attention. And I know what this is. And if I have to point at it for somebody or hopefully they can find it, there's only so much that you can do. So if you want to put your molly pouches on there, your morale pouches, whatever they're called, go for it. Um, now, this pouch has a, let's just slide this out of the way here. This pouch has a mesh uh, Velcro pocket keeper on the front. Um, and in that I have a little cheap signal mirror. Uh, and the reverse side is red. Um, I don't know where I got this. It's just some cheap thing I picked up and I kind of like it. Um, never had to use it. Hope I never do. It's got a little hole in it if you want to tie it to a lanyard, put it on your neck, whatever. And in here I've got a red bandana. Now, most of the time, you will not see me have a bandana with colors on it. Now, inside my packs, I do. But most of the time, I carry, and I got these off Amazon. It was like 12 bucks for 12 or something. A camouflage bandana. This is just part of my everyday EDC. You will not see me leave the house without one of these in my back pocket. I might want to cover my face, hide something. Uh, I might want to wipe my kid's nose. I might want to filter some water. Uh, I might be out collecting some mushrooms. You know, I can throw my chanterelles in there and kind of bag them up so they don't get busted up. Uh, just whatever. Um, there is an unlimited amount of uses for just a, a standard bandana. And I don't know how many I have in this pack, uh, probably four or five maybe. Um, I've got these with me all the time. So this one's red. I think I've got a white one in here. There's really no reason for it, but if I needed to, for whatever reason, identify something or make a, a yardage marker uh, for whatever reason, Say you had to set up an ambush and you want to see how far away somebody is and you want to walk it off. I, you know, I don't know. Tie this up in a tree, walk back, check it out, wait for somebody to pass if there's a threat. I mean, you know, you never know. So it's nice to have something visible among all this earth tone uh, tactical stuff. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm not going to do that right now. So this little fatty. Now, like I said, this helps me to organize a lot of smaller tools that I keep with me that uh, a couple of these are gonna come out. Uh, some of them I find useful, some of them I dislike, and I wanna have them with me. Um, this is not really by any means an emergency thing, but uh, it just helps me. It's basically like a tool roll. So, now what I've got here is uh, I've got a little pry tool. I've got these. This is something that's probably gonna come out of the pack. Uh, it's something I really like to have with me, but most of the time, this is what I call a desk type tool. Uh, it's not really big enough to do any kind of major work with, but it's super handy and super strong. This is a uh, Nipex or Nipex, whatever you call it, uh, locking position channel locks, and these things are stout. Uh, as small as it is, I could clamp this onto something and stand on it and it's not gonna bend. I mean, this is tough uh, German engineering here. Um, the grooves and the teeth in these things are sharp. I don't know if Anybody's, uh, you know, had a lot of experience with this particular brand, but they they grip really well. This is, it's better than your standard blue-handled channel locks, which, I mean, work fine, but these are really, really good. Um, and I like that it fit in here, uh, but I'm just, it's just one of them things, I, I'm not going to, I got a multi-tool. Here's the thing, you don't need a ton of crap like this because you're going to be walking down a road probably hugging the shoulder of the road. Um, if you see some people, you're probably gonna go into the woods, off the highway, uh, if you're traveling that way. You don't wanna deal with people, especially groups of people, and especially if you're by yourself. What am I gonna need channel locks for in the woods? Um, 
this screwdriver is a Klein uh, eight in one stubby. I use this thing at work all the time. Uh, it, a lot of times if I need this, it's the only thing that'll fit in a space. If you are gonna put a screwdriver in your pack, I recommend this one. No, it's not big, but you can still get a good crank on it. The bottom of it spins, so you can do it one-handed and, you know, work it like that. This expands outward, and it's got all these tips in it here. And if you find one in here that's not useful, like, uh, for instance, a number one square tip, I, I'm an electrician and I don't use that. Now, the number two, I use quite a bit in panels. The number one, I've never seen a use for it. So you could take that out. You could take this Phillips in here, put it in here, and they're all enclosed. And then you've got your uh, your quarter inch nut driver right there. You, I mean, you know, you could open up a, uh, a HVAC uh, system under a house or whatever with this, um, depending on the brand. But anyway, this is a an extremely extremely handy tool. Um, I don't know if I need it. I've got screwdriver tips in my Leatherman, and uh, I just don't see a, a big need for that. If if you're watching Walking Dead and you think that's what you've got to work your pack around or model your pack around is that sort of situation, what you need at that point is like an end of the world wasteland wanderer scavenger bag. I mean, you're gonna want like a small crowbar, some breaching tools, maybe a screwdriver, things like that. I'm not trying to work my way home. I'm not trying to bushcraft my way home. I'm trying to get my way home. So if I have to sit there and tinker with something to get into something, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. I'm wasting time, I'm wasting carbs and energy. I'm going. So I would love to put this thing in here and you guys know what I'm talking about. You got something you really wanna put in here but you just don't see a need for it. So this is going back to work with me uh, where, where I actually need it. So. Um, along with some of the other tools in here. Now I do have another Leatherman tool. This is a small, this is the micro. The reason I had this is because I've customized my main Leatherman. I took the scissors out of it. Um, so now I've got a pair of scissors and they're better than the ones that were in the multi-tool. So I've got things in the multi-tool now that I actually use and I've got this if I need it. And this has little tiny knife blades and really small things like that, that factory edge, I mean, they're sharp. And that's probably about the only thing that I would use on this, but I'm big on redundancy. Uh, I, like I said, I'm tool heavy. I've, I've got something for everything. So if you need to cut a piece of material or just whatever, cut something loose that's bothering you. Uh, one thing that I think if you carried a slingshot with you today, modern slingshots, and I'm gonna do a review on one coming up later, uh, you you can taper your bands, you can fix things on your slingshots. It's not like your old school, the ones your grandpa made or gave you where you're out there shooting rocks. The slingshot game has just come a long way and I think they're an excellent survival tool these days with the, uh, uh, the latexes that they have now and everything. Um, but we'll talk about slingshots later in another video. But uh, just something like that. Uh, so I'll get something like that out uh, but the uh, Leatherman Micro, it's just so small, it doesn't weigh anything, it's not bothering me, it's about the size of a stick of chapstick, so. And then I've got a small Swiss Army knife, it does have scissors in here, uh, and a couple other things. I keep this because I don't keep a typical sized uh, Swiss Army knife with me. I don't have anything against them, I just, uh, I carry a folder, a Benchmade folder, and I have carried Swiss Army knives, uh, but I like something that I can open one-handed, cold weather, with a glove on. Uh, you know, if, if you got your little typical slip, slip joint knives, it can be kind of hard to work with. I don't know if you guys have ever been out in negative seven degree weather and you're trying to cut the band off a bale of hay or something. Uh, you don't want to take your gloves off when the wind's blowing and sit there and fumble with a little knife and open it up. So I like this, I can close it one-handed, you know. So it's just one more thing to have in here. I like the toothpick and the tweezers on this. Um, and it does have a small, a very small 3D Phillips head on here. Uh, 
you probably can't see that, but um, if you had to tinker with your glasses or something, um, these are the only glasses I wear. Uh, I never had to wear glasses, so there's a number of other things on this, a fingernail file. And this is basically like a grooming tool for me. If I had a splinter or something, uh, a mustache hair that's bothered me, I could clip it off with the scissors in here. Um, so I, I don't have a ton of uh, uses for this, but if I needed it, then I, I would need it, you know? Um, so that just kind of rides right there. So I like this little tool roll option on this fatty pack. Uh, you can just put a number of things right here. Uh, you can make this your med kit and put, you know, just whatever, uh, your Neosporin, your chapstick, your scissors or hemostats, or if you're medically inclined, I don't know. I've got another bandana. There's a pouch behind this. I've got another bandana in here. This is a gray one, a neutral color. The reason I hit on the colors on the bandanas is because I used to work in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I've seen a lot of gang activity around. And uh, I've seen articles on the news where uh, people were shot for having the wrong color thing on. Or this one guy was a uh, he was an athlete in college, about to graduate, and he was out partying with his friends, and he did the Crip Walk dance. Uh, if you're familiar with that, just playing around, you know, white guy obviously not affiliated with any kind of gang uh, but since he was doing the crip walk uh, a couple members of the blood gang saw him and they shot him and killed him so the world is nuts that's why we do all this so pay attention to what you're doing i used to carry these bandanas all the time i used to have a brown one then i found out that uh, uh what, what's that gang i don't know if it's brown pride or i forgot what it is now but that was their color so i got rid of that one I don't know of anybody that carries the gray. It might be neutral. Who knows? Um, that's why I stick with the camo bandanas. You just, unless there's a camouflage gang out there, I don't know about it. If there were, I'd probably be in it. So now there's a little strap in the inside of this pouch and I keep, I found this digital camo uh, duct tape and I keep it in a, uh, Ziploc bag and I took the core of it out the cardboard core and flattened it out still works it's fine um, and it slides right in there and it actually helps stiffen the spine of this pouch so it's not collapsing on me 550 paracord guys you already know this keep some on you most people say 50 feet some say 100 I've got 150 here and the reason for that is if I want to do a, a ridge line for a tarp shelter or my uh my military poncho shelter or just anything I can run this across a good section of trees a lot of times you don't find trees close enough they're bigger they're spread out but you got a spot you want to be in you got to look for where the water is going to run off down the hill or you don't want to get soaked when you're trying to stay dry um, you know we've got enough uphill fights in life we don't need to create more for ourselves so 100 feet of paracord that I don't cut um, I tie it around I do my loops, you know, you can do your trucker's hitches and your, your ridge lines and all that stuff. Um, don't cut this one, your main one. Now this 50 foot one, I'll cut it if I need to. If you want to do your Prusik loops and things or you're just, uh, your smaller pieces. I've got these tent stakes for that purpose for building a shelter. Um, with these, you can kind of hook it in the grommet and you don't really have to have smaller pieces cut off to make your loops. Um, but I may lose these. I may have to make wooden tent stakes or something like that. Uh, may be trying to set up something to uh, swing a pot over a fire. Well, I can make a loop around a stick and hold it up and cut this off. So I can cut this and make uh, multiple things out of it. This one does not get cut. So and we went through the tent stakes. Now I, I purchased these. I like the, uh, the triangular or the three-sided tent stakes I feel like they, they get a good bite in the ground these kind of want to spin but uh, these are a little bit tougher these are steel stainless steel uh, those triangular ones are aluminum a lot of the times so you can probably get titanium who knows uh, solid gold whatever they got out there uh, I bend those all the time and if I use those I typically go with the shorter not the the full size 8 inch or 6 inch or whatever I like the shorter ones um, because they're less likely to bend. Uh, you're not going to get them as deep in the ground. You're not going to get uh, all the rocks and stuff 
uh, further down in the ground. So, but I like these. They're they're quick. They're simple. They're like 98 cents a piece at Walmart. I keep six of them. You know, you got your four corners, and then you got your side tie-offs for your tarp or your shelter or whatever. And you may not need all six. Uh, Tack Divi. Um, I had mild hypothermia one time, and it wasn't in my whole body. It started in my hands. I was trout fishing. My hands got wet. I couldn't even break a worm in half. Uh, by the time I got back to my truck, I had to reach behind the steering wheel with both hands and push against the back of my hand and my palm to turn the key, which was quite a feat because my thumbs didn't work, uh, just to turn my truck on to get the heat on so I could drive home. Hypothermia is a big deal, uh, especially when you're around water. When it starts to come on, it, it's quick. Uh, so you need to do something. And if, you, if you're if you wet, if you're looking at full body hypothermia, this could help you. Uh, you know, get your wet clothes off, jump in this thing. If you can get a fire going, great. If not, you need to get in here and you need to shiver until you get warm, until you can move. So uh, it's got a whistle on it. You know, that's fun. So I don't like bugs, especially mosquitoes. I cannot stand mosquitoes. I hate them. Uh, out here where I live, we have a ton of them. Gnats, they fly right in your eyeballs, in your nose, in your ears. You can't think straight when you need to really focus on something. You cannot do that when you've got a constant cloud of annoyance around you. So this thing goes over your head and it cinches tight around your neck. You can put it over a hat, like even a big hat, um, you know, all the way over. I, th this was cheap, you know. Um, it's lightweight. It's out of the way in, in the, the pouch here. So I recommend something like that. I've also got this 40% uh, DEET bug spray. I don't like spraying chemicals on me. I really don't. Uh, this is the only thing that works. And when you spray this, if you take in a deep breath at the same time, you're gonna know it. You're gonna cough. It's it's awful. It sucks. I don't like having it on me. A lot of times it burns. I mean, you know, but I'll spray it in my beard and my hair. I've got longer hair. Uh, I'll even spray it on my hand and rub it on my face if I have to, if I'm that annoyed. Uh, bugs really get to me, so. Now there's a, you've got your molly webbing in here and you've got some bigger loops in here with some smaller on top. Now in the back here, I sort of keep a uh, non-emergency style uh, hygiene items. Uh, I've got my wet ones. Like I said before, everybody needs to carry these. Uh, you might have to clean your butt. I mean, come on. Uh, you can clean anything. Clean your hands. You might have to uh, move something out of the way that's just gross. Uh, you can clean your hands up with this. I should put some hand sanitizer in here. That's one thing that I didn't think about. My problem with that is it has to be a good canister because I don't want nothing leaking out in here. That's one reason why I'm against alcohol stoves because I don't want alcohol dumping out of my pack for whatever reason. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know. I don't want to deal with it. Uh, so in this pack here, I've got, or in this pouch rather, uh, Excedrin migraine. And the reason for that is it's not a headache. I get what they call silent migraines. Um, it's not necessarily the big old headache where you have to hide out in, in the dark and close all the curtains. My vision gets blurry. I get what they call kaleidoscope vision. And I can't see really what I'm focusing on. Um, I've been driving before and had to pull over. It only happens a few times a year. This is the only thing that will get rid of it. Now those silent migraines typically only last like 20, 30 minutes, but if you're in a situation where you gotta get out of a place or you need to watch some people or pay attention to what's going on, if, if I think one's coming on, I'm gonna pop two of these in my mouth and uh, it, it does the job as far as getting it out of there. Um, blurred vision in a serious situation is not something you want. So you got to think about, uh, you know, things that pertain to you as well. So um, Tylenol, extra strength or Tylenol arthritis or whatever. Sometimes the elbows and knees hurt. Uh, it can make a difference. If you're walking and your knees are hurting or whatever, your back's hurting, it, it it's a good thing to have. Um, these are small. You can only fit like 10 capsules in these little things. What I did with this one is I bought a Tylenol one and I 
put what I wanted in this one, the Excedrin, and I wrote it on there. Uh, these nice little capsules, they pack away pretty good. Um, they're out of the way. Not much bigger than chapstick. So. Uh, toothpaste and toothbrush, this little thing, I don't know where I got it, it's cheap. Um, you pop it out, stick it in there, now you got a handle. Close it back off, keeps it clean. Um, now these are optional items, obviously you can put whatever you want in here. Uh, but these are just things that I, I feel like would help me on my way uh, in that respect. So that's the Maxpedition fatty pouch. It's a good pouch. Now I'm going to move on to my kitchen. And this is more of a uh, bushcrafty type thing. Um, there is something in this that I'm going to change. Now, this is what they call, uh, a lot of people call a nesting cup. This is your cheaper GSI. It works fine. It's got the swing out handles on it. You can slide that into, you know, a bed of hot coals or whatever you want to do. Um, for a morale booster, you can get those little uh, Kool-Aid packets. Um, you don't have to add sugar to them. You just pour them in there and put like your eight or 10 ounces of water. Stir it up with a stick, drink it. When you're hiking a long way and you just drink water after water after water, sometimes you just want to taste something. It makes a little bit of a difference. So this cook pot will sit right down in that. It doesn't clank, really. I don't like clanky things. Um, but this is the Stanley, I think it's called a two cup uh, cook set. Uh, it, has, it has a locking lid on it and I really like that. Um, I'm a big fan of the MSR. They're, they're shorter, like pots. and the handle locks down on it and it flips over and you've got a long handle I, I really like that this is a more compact version for what I can fit in here and this works pretty good uh, so that handle locks you know and you can set that on something you can boil water in this if you need to uh, like I said I'm not trying to boil water with what I've got in this pack it's got this little stand-up plastic tab on it it's got a cook lid with the, the holes in it so you can boil some rice in here or something like that um, it's a pretty good size. This is a, it's 20 ounces up to here and you got your lid. So what I've did with this is I've got a, another bandana in here. This one's white. I might have to surrender. You never know. Um, but this is for cleaning my kit, um, drying everything off so I can put it back in there. I don't have moisture, whatever. I like to roll things up in bandanas at work, so it's, you know, just no cowboy way of doing things, I guess. Uh, not that I'm a cowboy, but... Now, in here, I have this little Esbit emergency stove. It's a two-position. You can do it like this or fully out. This pot will not fit in there if it's fully out, so I think this one... No, that one won't either kick it down and they'll fit on there these little uh, I think they're called trioxaline tabs you can fit four inside of this thing and close it you don't they come in a pack of 12 I think it stows 12 bucks and then a, a pack of these are like seven bucks I think for 12 of them you can fit four inside here and compact it down my problem with this stove and this is one of the things that's coming out of the pack I like it I can put twigs in here and keep a fire going one of these uh, trioxaline tabs, it'll boil a pint of water in eight minutes, I think is what they claim. I tested it and it works. Okay, so you boil this cup of water, now what? You've got a little bit of safe water to drink. Well, I've got a Sawyer water filter. I don't need to do that. I might want to cook rice or ramen noodles or some macaroni packets in here. I would have to keep adding these tablets. I'm probably going to run out of these tablets. Yes, I can put sticks in here and keep a little fire going or put some coals in here and possibly warp this frame. I don't want to do that. Uh, what I'm going to get is uh, a pocket rocket. I had one before and I'm going to fit it down in here with all this stuff and get rid of this. Um, and the reason that I don't want to sit there and build a fire with this if I don't have to is because if I'm off the side of the highway and I'm trying to hide, I don't want people smelling smoke and seeing a fire and coming to see what I'm doing. You know, uh, I may be holed up in a, uh, a lean-to or an old barn or something like that for the night, and I just want to be left alone so I can get some rest, so I can get up and go. 
um, I don't want to have to build a fire in this. And honestly, I just don't, unless you keep adding fuel to this thing, there's not much use for it. So if you need to hurry up and make a pint of water, this is great. Um, other than that, it's now if you're bushcrafting, you might want to sit here and use this and have a little twig stove. That's great. This ain't a bushcraft pack. It's not what it's for. It's gone. So I've got a little two little scrub pads here. These little green ones. Um, these work really well, especially for cleaning the stainless steel kind of stuff. Um, if you had to, you can throw some sand in here and some water if you got something really stuck in there uh, and just work it loose. Um, but that folds up nicely and I cut it actually to fit the top of that. So like I said, that it works out. You might like these things. I'd, if I've got a little gas stove, I would have to add a canister about the size of this cup to my pack. Well, that's fine because those things last a while. I've used them um, and they work really good and you, it'll go for a while. Uh, you don't have to keep adding fuel. You've already got fuel coming. You, you can cook some rice, um, get you a little packet of tuna, throw it in there and go. Now, you notice I don't have any food in this pack because I'm not gonna tell you what to eat. Um, I'm gonna get some of those flat packs of tuna that don't come in the can, and I'm gonna take some Mylar and uh, make my own bags the size that I want that I can fit a few of them down in here. So maybe two little packs of like servings of rice, a couple packs of tuna, and where I can fit all of my kitchen stuff together um, in a small compressed little uh, deal, you know. Uh, the tuna, as long as you keep it out of out of the heat, it's going to be fine. Um, so tuna with rice, you got some protein, uh, you got some food in your belly, you can sleep, you can get up and go. Uh, I got these thick plastic forks. Um, you can get in here. Uh, it works really good with this size. This is a little bit deeper, but it's fine. You can tilt it, um, and you got two. If there's two of you, you could share with this. Um, but I cut the backs of them off. Uh, so they fit in here. Uh, last but not least in my kitchen, and this is gonna go in my water kit when I get a pouch for the Sawyer Mini. This is a, a Silcock key, uh, I think is what it's called, or a Silock or whatever. It's got four different sizes. Now, if you're near a commercial building, like a Dollar General or something, most of the time there's a faucet and you've gotta open like a little door on it or sometimes it's just out there and you find the right size and you can access that water it's going to be city water and it's going to taste like chlorine but it's most likely going to be fine to drink it may not taste like your well water you got at home but uh if you're going through an urban environment um this is a nice thing to have they're eight bucks at lowe's this is a cobalt brand um there's nothing going to go wrong with it you're not going to be beating on it so it's just a little square tip in here. There's four different sizes and you just turn the water on and off. Uh, it's gonna be heavily chlorinated water probably. So just learn to deal with that. You might wanna use it to uh, wash a body part or your hands or something, or just spray something off. You may not even wanna drink it, but you've got access to free city water or county water or whatever. So that's gonna go in my little pouch with my Sawyer Mini and I'll have a water kit. Now, moving away from that, along with a water kit, I've got a fire kit. This is the, I think it's called the Maxpedition Micro. It's got a little uh, mesh pouch on it, much like the fatty. All I've got in here in the front part for quick access is some fat wood um, wrapped up in the uh, Glad wrap kind of stuff, the sticky stuff. That is. If I'm camping and playing in the woods, this is my go-to fire starter. Now, this pack has two pouches in the back, and it's got these little uh, sort of spandexy type things. Um, I've got two lighters in here. I've got my Exotac fire rod with the tender holding capsule on top. This is my favorite ferrocerium rod it, they work great it's a good little size this will actually fit on your loop of your bushcraft knife if you've got one uh it'll go on there and stay one thing i would say about this though i've noticed that if i'm kind of handling it a lot these screw out so you can replace them if you wear them down 
the top unscrews because it's got a tender capsule on the top and this one's only got room for one of those little tender tabs you might would consider I'm not really worried about it there's that tab just putting a tiny drop of blue Loctite on like one or two of these threads and putting that on there because I have had it kind of work loose a little bit um, they make some that go on keychains I would never do that I've got one the uh, Nano I think it is or something like that I would never put that on a keychain because it's going to work back and forth on you or on my carabiner or in my pocket and the cap's going to come off or the striker's going to come off. These are really well made. Uh, highly recommend Exotac. If you don't know anything about them, go check them out. This thing's about $32, I think. I think it's well worth it. Um, yeah, you can get those Bayites off of Amazon for like six, seven bucks or whatever. And they're half inch and like eight inches long or whatever. They don't work as good as these. They work not as good as this. So. If you're cold, try to get a fire going, nothing else is working, you want something good. And it, it's cool gear, so just, just buy one. I mean, I did, and I don't have any money, so. The uh, pocket behind this, I've got some of those tender tabs in it. Over here, I've got two of these match boxes that uh, I like. They're waterproof, um, and on my last video I said that it has a little fire striker that I wouldn't think would work for anybody and someone actually corrected me I appreciate it I can't remember your name but uh, thanks that's for striking matches on it is a matchbox duh I didn't pick up on that uh, I've got Vaseline soaked cotton balls in this one and I've got matches in this one so I've got a, two lighters a fire striker and some matches behind the matches in this pouch I've got some of the uh, the sort of sandpapery strikers off actual matchboxes um, I like matches because when you strike them, you've already got a burning stick. Just keep the wind off them. Um, it, it works. Now, this little match box, you can cram, I think it's seven full-size cotton balls soaked in Vaseline in here. So that's seven uh, pretty easy fires you can start. The bottom one or two, it's kind of hard to get out. You can make a cut in a stick, spin it around, but I've got a little... Uh, traveler's hook in here it's not necessary I just stuck it in here because it I could use it for other things but it would help me dig those out and it actually had two ends on it and I cut one off I'm gonna sand that down so I've got a point so I could use that for something else maybe a small punch or poke a hole in something who knows I got this at, I think it was on the counter at AutoZone uh, a couple bucks maybe really sharp hook I guess if you had to you could pick your teeth with it um, be kind of rough so there's that now the reason that I like having my my little fire system separate is because maybe I just want to go start a fire maybe I don't need nothing else maybe I just want to hang out by a fire uh, I can grab this thing I can walk around I can do whatever I need to do with it uh, and I can throw it back in here so I like to have if you've noticed my things I like to have my kitchen my water system my fire system, my little toolkit, uh, everything individual in here. So it's not all mixed together and I'm not fumbling through it like, oh, okay, well, what's this? You know, I've got my little trauma kit out here. Um, things like that. Uh, these little rolls of toilet paper, there's three of them in here in a Ziploc bag. That should be plenty for, I don't know, two, three days. Um, if you run out of this, there are natural resources out there. Or if you're bandana heavy like me, you can use one of those. I lost a pair of gloves one time to this situation on a hunting trip in a blizzard. It sucked. <laughs> so, toilet paper. I've got a pair of these gloves. Um, they're like a stretchy kind of glove. They got a rubberized bottom on them. Um, I use these a lot at work. Uh, they work pretty good. I like these because they fit tight to your hand. They grip really well. They pack down small. You can roll them up like a pair of socks. But also, they keep you kind of warm. They'll kind of break you from the elements a little bit. But also, this is the most comfortable glove that I found that I can shoot a handgun with. Um, you can get in and out of the trigger guard really well. It feels like you've just got like a little bit more extra grip. Maybe like an extra layer of skin on. It's not a big heavy glove with a crazy sewn finger that you're trying to pull a trigger with. So, I like these. Um, they're pretty good. 
you get the I got these at City Electric. Um, this is a little bit more expensive pair. You get cheaper options at Lowe's, whatever. Just kind of roll it up, stick it anywhere in your pocket, in your hat, whatever. I don't know why you do that. Okay, now I keep a small set of binoculars with me. Uh, you might want to do a little bit of recon. Now, picture a situation. Say you're walking down an interstate trying to get home. There's cars everywhere. You know, you don't see a whole lot going on. You want to know what's ahead of you. You might be in a field. You think you hear something. But the main thing about the highway, most people are going to take the, the path that's easiest. And the road is typically it. We know the roads. We can't just cut through all the farms and the uh the mountains and the forest and everything to get home we don't know where we're going if you're good with a compass and a map which is something i need to work on i can do it a little bit but uh you got to know your declination your magnetic declination and, and all that stuff um most people are just going to follow the roads on they're going to know the way to go go the way that they know um now imagine you're coming up on an overpass and you think you saw somebody up there it might be a group of people what you've got, if you're going through there, is basically like a fatal funnel. So you can go under it, or you can go on either side of it if you climb up. There may be people over there waiting to ambush you, take all your stuff, kill you, who knows. Drop back off the shoulder of the road, get in the woods, creep up, take this small pair of binoculars, kind of watch what's going on, get a good idea. These are Nikon's uh, Aculon, is what they're called. Um, it's a really good packable size. They work They work really well. They're decent. They come with a little pouch. Uh, I took the pouch off because it's too much bulk. I don't need pouches for everything. Um, I've got enough. So Now, in the back side of this pack is two smaller compartments. Now, one of them you can completely pass behind. You can put a water bladder in here if you want to. I don't like that. I like to be able to grab my water out of a bottle. Water bladders are good. They're convenient. On this pack, you can actually, you don't have a port for it, but you could open a hole in the zipper and run your cord out and put it through here and you can sip on it as you go. I just don't like water bladders. If you're relying on that and for whatever reason, you get a hole in it, you're done. You have no water. So it's not that bad to stop, even if you take your pack off and take a few drinks of water and keep going. We don't need all the conveniences that people think that we need. I mean, sometimes you just gotta stop and take a drink of water, it's not a big deal. So, so in the front of that is a little pouch here. You can put your maps in, or I, I recommend putting something flat in here. You know, maybe your bandanas or your map or a notebook or just something, whatever. I've got two in this zipper pouch here. Can't close it because they're too big. I've got two heavy mill trash bags, like the six mil. That is going to be my like emergency base layer, um, or if I want to lay down on something, I could cram it full of leaves or whatever, make a mattress out of it, uh, stick it up under my tarp um, or my poncho, have something a little bit more comfortable to lay on. That's a good place for those because it's flat up against my back, it's out of the way, it's not crammed up in this other stuff. So, so that's uh, pretty much it for the inside of the pack. Now, what I want to do is uh, I'm gonna flop the camera around and I'm gonna show you guys how this fits on me and why I like this size of pack. Give me one second. Okay, so this is why I really enjoy carrying this particular pack, the Maxpedition Pygmy Falcon 2. One, it's got this uh, expandable sternum strap. Now it does not have the waist strap on it. One thing about some Maxpedition products is they're really strappy. I don't like a ton of straps. The only straps on this thing is this one right here, which is not in the way, and these two here, which I can cinch down. And if I feel like my load is too far on my back, I can just grab right here and pull it tight and it stays up there. It expands back out if I have a larger coat on or if I'm a bigger person or what have you. I can throw this thing on. There's no weight in it, so it's kind of hard to do right now. But, um, it doesn't protrude from my back very far. It's pretty nimble. I can get in and out of things, uh, through rooms, around walls, uh, tree branches, briars, things like that. Um, heck, I can even hold my hands right here. I do that sometimes if I just want to, you know, 
throw my weight a little bit differently. It's got these straps here. Like I said, you could run a tube for a water bladder on. Uh, you can clip a knife on there, something, your radio, if you want it right there on your shoulders. It's got these little D loops here. I've never used them, but they're there. These top straps. Now, if you feel like your load is not sitting properly on your shoulders, you can relax it or loosen it uh, or tighten it, I mean, uh, with these. Um, and I do use these sometimes. It just depends on how far I'm walking. Now, it, I, I bought this pack initially I used to ride a dual sport motorcycle and uh, I wanted something high up on my back that's not like dragging down near the seat when I'm sitting down on the motorcycle. This pack works very well for that. And also, as you can see, if I have a firearm on me, it's not gonna be in the way of my draw. There's no waistband in the way. Um, the back of the pack is not in the way. Typically, when I conceal carry, I carry at a four o'clock position, that flat part on your hip right there before you get to your butt. Um, I could draw from there and access my firearm. It's completely out of the way. I love this pack. It's extremely comfortable. It's extremely durable. It's virtually waterproof. It just works for me. I love it. Um, so I highly recommend it. Maxpedition Pygmy Falcon 2. Now guys, I appreciate you watching this. I know it's kind of a long video. If you see anything that I left out or that you, uh, want me to elaborate on in the comments, just let me know. And, uh, if you have any gear out there that you think I should know about that would work better for my situation and my pack and what I'm doing, please let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. So I appreciate you watching uh, Pine Box Perspective, and we will see you next time. Thanks.